Due to the continued and persistent efforts of ivory poachers, elephant conservation is now more important than ever. Although poachers harvest elephant tusks for the ivory trade, the effects of poaching extend far beyond tusks alone. Older elephants are the main targets because they have the longest and most developed tusks, and their deaths deeply affect the social network of elephants. Since elephants are social creatures who function in close relationship units, the loss of a single matriarch is devastating, reducing necessary knowledge and adaptation skills typically passed down to younger clan members. Between 1979 and 1987, the African elephant population declined from 1.3 million to 600,000, which means it reduced by two-thirds. It is clear extinction is a legitimate and serious threat of massive ivory poaching. To stop the mass killing of African elephants, the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species, or CITES, passed an agreement in 1989 banning the sale and purchase of ivory. Despite this ban, the same patterns continue today. The largest confiscation was in June 2002, when authorities in Malawi confiscated a shipment of over 6.5 tons of ivory heading to Singapore. Anywhere from 3,500 to 6,000 African elephants were killed for this shipment. In 2006, an estimated 25,000 to 29,000 kilograms of ivory were seized en route from Africa within the span of two months. Based on these seizures, scientists estimate over 8% of the African elephant population is wiped out annually. This mortality rate exceeds the current 6% annual reproduction rate. The African elephant simply cannot sustain its population with this level of poaching. Scientists are using DNA testing to determine the origin of elephant ivory and poaching hotspots. DNA testing is a complex process. First, scientists collect a tusk sample and then extract pieces of ivory. These small pieces of ivory are then ground up and undergo both chemical and mechanical transformations so that the DNA can be effectively extracted. Once the DNA is isolated, it is amplified or copied at specific loci or gene locations. Alleles, different forms of a gene, are then compared to genotypes of samples taken from elephant dung or tissue. In this way, scientists can take alleles observed in unknown tusks, compare them to known elephant population ranges, and then assign these tusks to specific geographic origins. Even if there are no reference samples available for a particular region, this technology can still determine ranges for elephant populations. These DNA analyses have been between 85 to 100% accurate. Most importantly, DNA testing allows scientists to trace the geographic origin of the ivory. In the 2002 seizure, DNA testing was instrumental. By testing the salvaged ivory, scientists found the ivory was concentrated to a region in Zambia, where it was transferred in small shipments from Malawi to South Africa and then to Asia. Scientists also determined that the ivory had come from elephants living in a constrained geographic area. This reveals that criminal syndicates are intensely exploiting a particular region for extended periods until the elephant population goes almost extinct. Law enforcement agencies can utilize genetic evidence to concentrate their anti-poaching efforts on these specific regions. This approach targets the trade at the root of the problem. It stops the trade before it enters the international market and forces countries where poaching is rampant to assume responsibility. The ultimate goal is to track the source of the trade and avoid further elephant killings. All this raises the question, how can international governments effectively work against the poachers and combat the illegal ivory trade? The answer is a multifaceted approach. First, wealthy industrial countries must provide African wildlife services with the financial aid needed to generate effective law enforcement. The participation of these countries is essential as they are the ones currently driving the trade. Second, there needs to be increased education on the ivory trade and how the elephant population will go extinct if poaching continues at its current level. Third. 
DNA testing should continue to be used proactively to increase the number of seizures and save more elephants. Ultimately, the site's ban only reduced poaching for a short period of time. Increased DNA testing and greater international collaboration can and must reduce the level of elephant poaching before it is too late. Thank you.